Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on CCIE Wireless V2. In this video, I would like to show you how to convert access point into mesh mode. Nothing complicated really if you follow the right steps, and this video is just about that, giving you the right steps to make it pay. On this controller, I already have some access points and I already named them, as you see, wrap and map. I assume you have already some knowledge about mesh, so you know the wrap is the one that's connected to the wired network and is going to provide a bridge to the others, and the map is the one which is supposed not to have any connection, wired connection to the controller, and is going to use its wireless connection to uh, join the controller. So now, they are both in local mode, they are not in mesh mode yet. Um, so the first step might be to convert them to, to bridge mode. But in fact, you need to know that an access point in bridge mode need to be authorized to get back to a controller. So if I put these APs in bridge mode directly, they will never come back. But as you may make the mistake, and I would like to show you um, how you can recover from it, I'm going to do it anyway. So convert them to bridge mode and let them reboot. One and then the other. Bridge mode and reboot. This reboot process is going to take them somewhere between two and four minutes, depending on the model and, and the conditions. Uh, those two access points are still connected to the same switch as this controller. So although the map is going to be a map, it's going to use its wireless radio. For now, I'm priming it. So I'm using the wired connection to get that access point to this controller. And then once it's ready, I'll, I'll turn the uh, uh, wired connection off so that the AP has to use its wireless radio. The map always tries to discover its uh, controller using its wired interface first, and it's just because it fails using that wired interface that it's going to swap to the uh, wireless radio and try to use the yellow EPP protocol to discover other access points having the same group name as its own and use them as a bridge to get back to the wired network and to the controller. But again, all APs in bridge mode need to be authorized. For now, if I go back to management, if I go to SNMP trap logs, I will see that there is an error message saying that some access points are trying to join, but they can't because they don't have the right authorization. Like this. So this is an access point and it's trying to join, although it says WLAN user, it's actually an access point and it's not authenticated. Uh, there are two ways of authenticating an access point and you see even if you fail like I did here you can always copy the MAC address because you get the MAC address of the failed access point. Um, so you, there are two ways of authenticating a mesh access point. The first one is to use access point policies here so in security, AAA, AP policies. Um, here you can decide if all your access points on this controller have to be authorized but you can also simply add a new MAC address of an authorized access point. Uh, separator is going to be a colon. Alright, adding this access point. It's a manufactured um, insert, uh, certificate um, and this access point is going to be authorized. Uh, the other access point is going to have the same issue so I'm going to use another method for the other access point so you can see both methods. Um, the other method is to go to security and max filtering. You can also say new and you add a new MAC filter that allows the MAC address of that access point on this controller. Uh, both ways are not originally built for mesh access point. Of course it's going to be any LAN, any uh, IP address, and interface is going to be management because that's how the access point is going to discover the controller, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is the MAC address. So none of these two methods are actually built originally for, for Mesh. Uh, the MAC filter is built for MAC client and was used in the early codes of Mesh because uh, using the uh, AP policies at that time was sending all the APs to have to use authorization. So as soon as you were adding a first MAC address here for your Mesh AP, you had to authorize all the other access points on the same controller, so all the indoor access points as well. So that was not very handy. Uh, so they decided to use the uh, uh, MAC filtering instead to make it more flexible. But MAC filtering is not really the right way to do it either because it's supposed to be for clients associating to SSIDs. Uh, so in the later codes, they improved the IP policy, so now we can use either of these two modes and both of them are going to be fine. And after a few minutes, my map and wrap should be back. And as you see, they are now in bridge mode. And now that they are in bridge mode, I actually have a mesh tab. And the default mode for the access point is mesh AP. So you see, although I named that guy wrap, it's a mesh access point. It's not a root access point yet. Uh, but even though it's a mesh access point, it's using its cable to get to the controller. 
uh, once the IP uses its radio, it's going to try to discover um, other access points and it's going to decide if it can use these access points or not based on the fact that they are using the AWPP, which is a discovery protocol uh, that Cisco uses for mesh networks, and also if those access points are using the same bridge group name. The bridge group name is pretty much the, uh, the group name, so to speak, that the IP is going to use to know if the other access points share the same uh, controller and configuration as it does. And this name has to be the same on all the access points sharing the same cloud. It's not a security feature, by the way. It's just a way to speed up uh, the join process. So let me give a, a name to that access point. And guess what? As soon as I'm going to say apply, the IP is going to reboot once more. Same on the other access point, which is the future map. It's already in mesh mode. Same BGN as uh, the other guy. I click apply. By the way, for this video, I'm going to use time lapse, so you don't have to wait these three, four, five, six minutes like I do uh, while the access point reboot gets the configuration back and so on. And after a few minutes, my APs are back. Next step, go to the wrap and say that it has to be a wrap. This is important because only a wrap is going to allow the other access points to go through its radio via its wired interface to get to the controller. In other words, if you have only mesh access points, there is none of these access points that are going to allow any other access points to go through it to get to the controller through the access point wired interface. One of them has to be the wrap. Click apply and guess what? It's going to reboot once more. Once the wrap is back, we are almost there. So you see the map and the wrap are in bridge mode. They are still using the wired connection to get to the controller and they have now at the end a blue chevron on which you can click and check neighbor information to see what they see as mesh access points and for now they see nothing because they don't really use their uh, wireless radio yet to uh, participate in the mesh network even the wrap doesn't see anything because the map its neighbor is trying to use uh, its wired interface first to get to the controller so last step is to force the map to use its radio and to do so you can unplug the uh, um, connection to the switch. Uh, the issue is that to me, in my case it's a PoE switch, so probably the case also in the lab, so you don't want to use uh, that setup, this unplugging, because otherwise you're going to lose power as well. But my show CDP neighbor on the switch tells me that the map is on port 14, so I can just go uh, to that port uh, 14 and simply put it in a VLAN that is unknown and non-routed, you know, something that doesn't get back to the controller. And if you go back to the um, uh, controller itself, uh, you'll see it's going to take between 30 seconds and about a minute and a half before the controller realizes that the access point and the access point on its uh, side as well, uh, that there is no connectivity anymore. That's because the access points always send a uh, keep alive message to the controllers every 30 seconds by default, which is something you can configure on the controller, but 30 seconds is default. So it takes three keep alive to be missed before the access point or the controller realizes that there is a connection issue somewhere. So again, I'm going to use time lapse uh, to wait for the access point to come back. This step is going to take longer. It's probably going to take, we say, between 8 and 10, maybe sometimes 12 minutes, depending on cases, uh, because the map is going to have to reboot. It's going to have to fail discovering the controller on the uh, wired interface, so timeout here, and then it's going to have to scan all the A channels before it finally can find the wrap on whatever channel the wrap is. Uh, so that's going to take a while. Uh, we say if it takes t more than 10, 12 minutes, you want to check your, your configuration, check the logs, see if, see if there is something going wrong. Uh, but less than that duration, that's pretty normal. And after a good 8 minutes, my map is back. Um, and this time if I go to the end of my line and I go to the uh, neighbor information, I can see that there is a parent here. And if I go to the wrap itself on the uh, neighbor information, I can see uh, the map being a child. You always want to want to see child or parent, never default child or default parent. If you see default child or default parent, it means that the access point could not use its PGN to join the other access point. And it used a mode which is a what we call the lonely mode, which is not a, a normal mode, it's an emergency mode. So you always want to have child and parents and, and no default child or default parent. Um, how do you know if the access point is using its uh, radio? Well, first of all, both APs are on the same channel, 161, 161. If you go to neighbor information at the end, and there is a detail line again for the uh, uplink. And if you go to details here, you can see that channel 161 is going to be the backhaul 
So these are the basic principles. There is a lot more you can do with mesh networks and that's something we check in other videos. But for this basic configuration, these are the steps. The first one is to allow the APs, you know, using a Mac filter or the AP policies. And you saw that if you forget that, there is a way around uh, once you get the R message on the controller. Then you turn the APs to bridge mode. When they come back, configure the BGN, do that first. Then set the wrap to wrap, it's wrap roll, it's going to reboot again, and then you're ready to disconnect the map. So if you are uh, using a power brick, you can unplug the AP from the switch. But if you're using PoE like I am, that you just put the AP in an isolated VLAN, let's say somewhere where it cannot reach the, the controller by any means, and then it's going to time out on the uh, wired interface and use its wireless radio to get to the controller. I hope this was useful for you, and I would like to thank you for watching.